Hey guys, my name is Joshua Ajayi or Josh Talks Biz, as some of you may know me from the internet. And today I'm going to be going through how I went from an Irish aspiring footballer turned college dropout to a successful entrepreneur making five figures a month at 21. Being able to travel the world, live in different places like Milan, being able to drive the cars that I always thought I'd never be able to drive, and ultimately kind of craft the lifestyle that when I was just a young kid, sitting in my college dorm, I would think about in my head. So basically, I wanna go through in this video the challenges that I went through because I know it may look like it sometimes, but it wasn't easy. So I'm gonna share things today that I've never shared anywhere online, and I hope that you guys can take this. And just one thing as a big disclaimer, I am not making this video to brag. So if you're here thinking potentially this guy wants to brag, I click off and look away now. People who understand my story, I want to be an inspiration to those who maybe don't have somebody like I did at the start to look up to. So I am living in Ireland, as you guys may have seen, but my mom moved here originally from Nigeria back in the early 2000s. And um, she was a young computer science graduate, moved to a country that she didn't know anything about. And a couple of months later, young Joshua Jai popped out. So we came to Virginia Cabin. If everybody knows this, this really like remote place in Ireland where literally nobody exists. But yes, we are real. And this is a real person from Cavan, if you know where that is. But basically from there, it was just me and my mom. And she first came and she was put into kind of like an area with these asylum pl places that you're kind of waiting to see where you can go. A couple of weeks later, luckily enough, she was able to move somewhere close enough to live with my auntie, who was also living here in Virginia just for a couple of months since then. So my mom had a computer science degree, but the way things work is that when you come over to another country, you know, they don't actually recognize those degrees sometimes, especially when it comes from somewhere like Nigeria or Africa in general. So she had to start doing some odd jobs here and there, working with people, cleaning. So I was able to see from the start kind of what it's like to kind of work hard, no matter even how much you've actually tried in the past. It was just to never give up. You know, all the odds were kind of stacked against us from the beginning. Now, my mom is an insane hard worker and I've learned so much from her. And, you know, she rose to her own heights and had her own great career as well in general. But that's kind of where it all began. You know, I went to school. I was always really, really interested in being good at education. But one of the biggest things that was a switch for me was at the age of nine, I fell in love with football and Manchester United. Unfortunately, yes, Manchester United. But I was a massive football fan. So I joined my local club. I started playing with the team. But guys, I was your local bench warmer. I was not good at football, right? I barely made the squad most of the time. I sat on the bench, but I showed up every single time. Why? Because I had a passion. I had a focus on it. Now, luckily enough, things changed very, very soon. When I was 14, so in around 2016, an opportunity came to basically do trials with a League of Ireland football club. Now, nobody thought at all that I could make this, right? But guess who did? I did. That summer, I worked harder than anybody else. I went into the pitch every single day. And I guess this was kind of the beginning of this thing where when people don't think I can do something, and I know deep down that I can, I'll work as hard as I can to change that reality into the way that I wanted it. So surprisingly to everybody else except me, I made the team and I started to play for Longford Town FC from the age of 14 to 19. Now, at the same time as well, I was also just beginning into secondary school. And even though we weren't the most well-off family at all, my mom really cared about education. So she had me go to a private school, even though that was super high for us at the time. However, the biggest thing for me was, listen, if you want to play football, make sure your grades are still good. So I focused in school all the time and I had to make sure that I kept my grades at an A-level standard or else the football would go. And I was 18 guys, right? So I was 18 and I had essentially 12 months to play the best football that I ever played to be able to get a pro contract with the first team so that I could actually say, okay, I'm playing professionally for a team. I'm doing this full time or else I'd actually basically be shipped to university and told to focus on my studies. So that preseason, January 2020, I was in the best shape of my life. I was in preseason, I was focusing hard, I was training hard, I was feeling awesome. And I kid you guys not, March came up, the first week that we're about to have that first game of the season, I was pumped and I was ready and I knew it was gonna be starting. We get the announcement, COVID lockdown. There's been a virus and we're gonna shut things down. And that was the start of COVID lockdown. Now, why was that significant for me? Because that took a big chunk of that year off before we even try to get back into sports at the end of Q4. We had a couple of games, but I'd lost momentum. Just things just didn't go right. And honestly, by the end of that season, I didn't have the season that I expected. I didn't get up into the first team. I didn't get the time that I had wanted. And I sat there angry, blaming COVID-19 for putting me in this position. And the only option that I had was to focus now on my education. 
Now, though I wanted to be a footballer, I always wanted to be successful in general, right? Whether it was football or something else. I just knew that like, I want something better than the status quo. So I was looking up the best things to work in, the best places to make money, top 10 ways that you can make money on yourself in a job, right? So I found that I could do something in like the medical field. So I was like, cool, let me go and study something in science. And I applied for Loughborough University, which is one of the biggest sports universities in Europe and in the world as well. So I had to get some really good scores and I locked in for that year. So 2021, I was just kind of like focused. 2020, 2021, I was focused on school. End of the year came up and I got 533 leaving so points out of 625. So if you guys know how that point system works, 533 out of 625. Now, something else changed. And I thought that when I got that, that I was perfectly going to Loughborough. They had told me what I needed to get in terms of my grades. And I thought that that matched up exponentially. I thought I'd done so well. Then came the results day, and there was one exam that I didn't sit. It was the Irish language. Because Sorry guys, I love Ireland, but I just don't want to do Irish. I didn't sit that exam, and we had this thing called predicted grades. So this means that my teacher would give the recommendation that she thought was best. So she gave me something in the, in the realms of like a 70 or something like that. And what happened was the government automatically, it's just a system, degraded me down to 69%, and that changed my grade. So that 1%, unfortunately, was the difference between them at Loughborough saying you can come for this year and then saying no you're not accepted. Now I did talk and talk and talk and talk until they said okay you can come next year. But that had never been in my mind. Bear in mind you know since I was 14 coming up to like 19 I had always kind of like been focused on something playing football or doing well in school. I never had in my mind like a year where I didn't kind of know what I was doing. It just didn't work on my plan. So you know the pressure of society, school, family, teachers, friends, Kind of just pushed me to be like let me just go do something anyways like i mean aren't i just meant to go to university next so i ended up going to dcu dublin city university and i done biotechnology now had i really known what biotechnology was no i can't lie to you i just put it down i didn't really have too much of an idea i just thought sounds cool something to do with science and tech probably makes a lot of money three months in to college in 2021 and i was a 19 year old who this is the first time i'd been freed and guess what i did i had fun so I was playing for the college team. Yes, I was playing football, but I was also going out just like every other first year girl. So I partied, I went out two, three, four times a week. I was doing school, I looked great. I was having fun, but really on the inside, I was slowly deteriorating and bugging away because I hated my course. It had almost put me against the wall. I remember days where I just didn't even want to wake up and think about the assignments that I have to do. And there was many times where I try to get that inner inspiration because I'm a motivated person. And I would sit there and say, I'm going to do this physics homework. And I would sit there for two and a half hours, three hours, trying, cracking my brain, getting nowhere. I would say, guys, that this was one of the lowest moments of my life because I'd never been able to like go somewhere and feel like I'm hopeless, like I don't actually know what I'm going to do. And that had a massive effect on me because I was meant to be this happy, outgoing guy who was always had things in order. But really on the back end, like I was slowly kind of like fading away. You know, there was times in the mornings when I would wake up, I would just sit in my bed all day until I had training later on because I just didn't feel like I wanted to do anything. And I remember before this, I never thought, I used to always think, what does it mean to be depressed? Or what does it mean to not like know what you wanted to do? And for sure at this point of time, I fully understand what it meant to be depressed. It just got to a point where I came into December, one day it just hit me. I picked up the phone and I was crying on this phone and I called my mom and I told her I can't do this. I gotta go. I gotta quit. I told her this and I wasn't sure what she was gonna say, honestly guys, because you know she really wanted me to, to do well in university, but she said, Don't worry about it, son, come home, take your time, and I came home. So that brought me then to 2022 January. So I was working a job in Nike at this point, probably making like six hundred euro to like maybe a thousand euro if I worked every single day of the week, every single week. But I decided like I've got seven months till the next school year and I might just go back to Loughborough. Remember they'd given me an, an, an offer to come a year later. So I said I might just go back to that. But in the meantime, I could just stack some money, but I also could just learn some really good skills that I can put on my CV when I finish my degree and say I actually have some work experience. So I thought what skill would be great for applying for jobs with science and biotech, etc. Thought let me go and do something like sales. Why? Because in the meantime, it costs no money to get started. All I had to bring was my brain, my energy, and my gift of the gap. So I decided to sign up for a door-to-door -door sales company called Phonewatch, locally near me. And everybody told me again, do not do it. Family, friends, whatever. 
They said they had reviews online where it was so hard to make money. It was commission only. You make your money and if you don't do sales, you're not going to get money. Now for me, that seems so exciting. Wait, I can get paid for my performance. If I work hard and just do what I know I'm always going to do, they're going to pay me. Well, why wouldn't I do that? Because I always was somebody that wanted to work like really well. I always put in the best of my ability, no matter what I was doing. So it was a really, really simple decision for me personally, and I did it regardless. So I started my job and I still remember the first day it was a winter in Ireland and it was absolutely freezing. My toes were frozen. I was knocking door after door. I think I racked up over 100 doors in my first day, all no's, right? And bear in mind, I was a young 19 year old just after leaving college, was wanting to be a footballer. Now I'm knocking doors in the cold. Like what was going through my mind in that moment? Like, what am I doing? Like, is this really what I wanted to do? But there was something inside of me. And this was the start of me really trusting that inner voice, that intuition, you know, whatever you want to call it, and just trusting God that he was going to show me the right way. So I kept on knocking doors. I came home, I watched YouTube videos, how to get better at sales, how to get better at sales. I listened to my sales managers. I had a great sales manager in my office, but they really helped me. And slowly but surely, by the end of my first month, I turned so many no's back into yeses that I was actually the rep of the month for my region. That was a big feat for me, and that's not it. I also made 2,500 euro in that month. Now bear in mind, guys, that I had only ever before made a maximum of like 800 euro, and that was for me working so much overtime. All of a sudden I was like, wait, it's possible to make this sort of money outside of not just having like a degree and going to college. And that's where the intrigue came into me, where it's like, is it possible to actually make money in different ways? So for the next six months, I put my head down in the ground and i worked and worked and worked i put myself in the best positions and i was soon enough the top five sales rep in the whole country i joined the mvp team i was a future leader i had my own team which i trained and in our first month we were you know the team best team in the country and you know at my peak on my best month i made five thousand euros i didn't even know it was possible it was so surreal, I was on cloud nine. But isn't it just so that in this world, when the pendulum seems like it's going great, it must swing to the other side. So then I really just started to get burned out. I mean, I was working sometimes six, seven days a week, knocking doors, traveling around the country, staying up in hotels for some nights. And yes, it was great, but I was super burned out. And I knew I wanted to get to that next level. And the next level opportunity was to be a sales manager and manage my own office at just 19. But without all the work I was doing, I saw how much extra work I would have to do just to get maybe an extra thousand or so onto it per month. And I thought, I don't really want to do this long term. This is great, right? I actually want to find a solution where can I bridge this gap between five to 10 so that I don't have to go back to university. So I started to think, and I started to think about some side hustles that I could take on and some things that I could do in the meantime. So I started Googling how to make money online. You know how it starts. I looked at drop shipping. I looked at Amazon FBA, I looked at forex trading, I looked at digital marketing. But with all those things I looked at, they just always seem to be a too high barrier of entry. You know, I'm not very, I'm not one to be fooled very easy. Like, not that I'm fooled and I don't think anybody out there is fooling, but some of these things are a lot harder than they seem. And I understood this and I knew that there was a lot of money that needed to be invested and I wasn't sure if I was ready then. I just thought to myself, like, man, I'm so good at sales. If I could just do sales somehow online, like if that was just an online business where I could take these skills, I'd make so much money because like, I'm so good at this already. How can I find a way to do this online? Then I looked up how to make money with sales online. Bingo. There it was. High ticket sales. Like I had had no clue what high ticket sales was before this. I initially thought Are these guys selling tickets. Now what it meant really was ticket meaning price. So high priced sales. So essentially there was this industry where you as a remote salesperson could take calls for a company selling high price packages. So things that are between 5,000, 10,000, 20,000, even up to 30,000 for marketing services, fitness, coaching, info products, anything really that's a service based thing that involves a transaction. You could sell that for companies. And I was so interested because when you sold this and you, let's say you close a $10,000 deal, and you make 10%. That was $1,000 from one deal. Now bear in mind at my door to door, I was making like 200 euro maybe per commission. I had to do a big volume to make sure that I got to the number at the end of the month. So this really intrigued me. Now the thing was, I didn't know anybody around me that was doing this. I had nobody in Ireland that I knew was doing this. And I didn't know anybody in the UK either. The only person I could see was this guy in America called Gareth Campbell. Now shout out to Gareth. 
I saw him online talking about high ticket sales. And I was like, this guy can help me. I need someone who can show me how to like work with these companies. How do I even, how does this even work? Like, do I message them? Do I call them? Do I go to their front door? So I came to him and he said, okay, cool. I can coach you. I can teach you. However, you got to pay for this program, which is like 2,500. I was thinking this guy's crazy. Pay him 2,500 something. I'm going to look out somewhere else. And I looked around, and I couldn't find it. And I knew he knew what I needed to know. At this point, I had never invested in myself. I'd never invested in like coaching. I'd never seen anybody else invest in a coaching. But again, I felt something in me kind of like, if this is a roadblock and this can make you that money, you'll make that 2,500 back and you'll never think about it again. So I went back to him and said, give me a couple of weeks. Let me go, knock some doors, make some money, save it. I'm going to do this. I didn't tell anyone. Didn't tell my mom, didn't tell my family. Just went ahead and I paid for it and I joined his program. And working alongside him, he taught me what high ticket sales was, how to do sales, how to find these jobs, and also started to make introductions with these companies. Now I went back and forth trying to find the right offer where I could actually make the money there. I knew it was possible, right? But it was also leading up to time to go back to university. So I was in a time crunch. It was now September. I tried high ticket sales for the last three months. Nothing really crazy. I think the most I made in a month was like a thousand. I hadn't found the right thing to sell that could really take me to the next level. I was in Canada on holidays with my family and there was two weeks till I was meant to come back home. And I was actually supposed to be starting university with Loughborough. I had accepted their offer and said I was going back because I hadn't figured it out. Now, lo and behold, this company comes in, the Rainmaker family. And they were looking to hire their first remote team. They had built a great brand. They were doing millions of dollars per month, but they wanted to start their own remote high ticket closing team. And high ticket closer is a salesperson that closed the deals. So I said, I'll apply. And I applied for the offer. Surprisingly, they let me come onto the interview and I went onto the interview. And here's one thing I can do. I can sell. So I sold myself. I sold myself to Jeff, that sales manager. was, And I told him, listen, you've got to hire me. I know I can do this. I didn't have all the history and the thing in the world. And he at that moment of time wasn't sure either. And he said, let me think about it. We had that call again. And then he just said, I feel like I'm just going to give you a chance. No actual reason why that should happen. But he just felt like he should give me that chance. And I still to this day believe that that's like God bringing us together. You know, Jeff was really into his faith and believed in God. And so was I. And I just know God at that moment was just like, this has to happen. But lo and behold, I joined the Rainmaker family sales team. <laughs> Here was a big decision. I was supposed to be going back to university in two weeks. But I knew that I needed to do this because this opportunity could make me five figures per month if I could get it right. So here's what I decided to do. I told my parents, I'm going to go with this opportunity. I'm going to put my head down to this for the next couple of months. If it doesn't work out, I'll go back to college. That conversation didn't go well. I had family meetings, uncles, aunties, the whole thing telling me about what I was doing, how it was risky, how I should go back. And again, one thing about me is like when I feel that intuition and sense of what I'm doing, I don't feel envy towards anyone. I don't feel angry about it. I just feel like, listen, I know and I can feel it. And if you can't, that's fine, right? And I'm not expected to live somebody else's dream. I want to live mine, right? And that's something I'll stick to to this day. Whatever you're doing, make sure that you're following your intuition, not somebody else's intuition, because it, their intuition isn't aligned with you. They don't have the secret code to your life. You have it. You got to follow it. So end to end anyways, I said, I'm going to do it regardless. Just give me a couple of months. And I came home, locked myself in my room because really nobody wanted to talk to me. No one was, everyone was upset with me. And I went ham at it. First month I went in there, I didn't do that well. I made like maybe $2,000 and I was thinking, whoa, what is going on here? I've just taken the biggest decision of my life. Now, when you're in the situations with your back against the wall and no other options, I swear it brings a different side out of you. Like I didn't even know I had this. I was thinking, what is the secret? What can I do? How can I find something different? And I was taking my time, going to the gym. I started to read. Now this book, Think and Grow Rich, essentially was just telling me that I needed to have a clearer vision of what I wanted, my goals, and to repeat them to myself every single day until they were ingrained in my mind or into my consciousness. So I said, whatever, I don't really know what these guys are talking about, but tons of successful people have used this book. And I heard this book like 10 times in the podcast. I read it and I started to do it. I woke up in the mornings, I would do my small meditation, I'd write out, I make 10K a month, blah, 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 blah. I do this every single day, every single day. I'd write it down on a piece of paper with full confidence that I would have it. And then I would put absolute work and effort into what I knew that I could control. From reading that book and implementing that, 30 days later, October 2022, I collected $110,000 
in sales for the Rainmaker family with a 10% commission, meaning I made $11,000 in one month. I had just turned 20 and I had made five figures. The battle that had began 10 months ago, I finally conquered. Guys, when I say I felt on top of the world, this moment was like nothing else. I'd been kind of tracking my journey on Twitter, if you guys know me on Twitter, and I was just kind of talking about what I'm doing, I'm hoping to break in, and like I never knew what it would feel like to actually be there, and I'm telling you, that moment there, it's still one of the best moments ever, right? That first time hits different than anything else because it's like that real proof, right? And before that, you're almost just living in a fantasy land that nobody else can believe, and you just have to trick yourself to believe. Now, I made that and I thought this is the time to go free. You know, my mom finally understood, family members, everybody kind of turned that new leaf and kind of saw that what I was doing was working and it was, and I was motivated. The thing with me is that I always want to go to the next level super quickly. You know, I don't like to stay at one point and say, hey, I'm fine with just being here. I kind of got to the same problem that had happened, you know, back with door to door. Yes, that was great money. And guys, I'm not again, not bragging, that was great money. But for me to go to the next level, because everybody should always try to keep improving, how could I do more? Because I was taking like seven calls a day. I was doing follow-ups. I was working the weekends. I was doing as much as I could to make sure that I had made that much. So for me to get to 15, 20, how am I going to double that? I mean, I'm not going to really have a life. I know I can travel everywhere, but if I travel to France and I'm in a bedroom for like 12 hours each day, I didn't really go to France, did I? So I decided, okay, I stayed there for another month or two. And then I decided, I've learned so much from this, guys. I've learned so many things. The next step for me is to go and figure out how to build these sales teams. How can I go and build sales teams for companies? How can I go and actually build these sort of things so that I can get not just a small portion of what I bring in, but a small portion of what everybody brings in? So I left and I started to look for some other partners. I then came across a new partner in January and they were looking to start a new business based in AI. And I thought, heck, they need someone to help set sales teams. Let me go and do this. I was really in my entrepreneur mode. I'd had a couple of thousand saved away and I was thinking, okay, this should get me through the next couple of months. In January, I decided to move to Spain, Alicante with Warren Mulvey, who was also slowly following along this journey as well as the side. And we both decided we're gonna go there for three months and figure this out. The month one, I started with this new business. We were building a sales team and there was this technology. Apparently that was meant to be really, really cool technology for like SEO online services. So a month went by and things started to look pretty decent. And I thought, okay, this is cool. We're not bringing in that much money at all. So I didn't really make anything, but this is a cool project and it's gonna make money long-term. Second month came in, I started to really doubt things here, right? I didn't really understand this technology. I didn't really understand what was going on. And I felt a little bit like I wasn't sure if this was actually going to work. Right in that third month, then I think everything just started to fall to pieces. I started to see and feel that something here just isn't right. And I wasn't hundred percent sure. And one thing with me is in this game, I want to make money and I want to be successful, but I want to do it in the most moral and ethical way possible. I will never sell my morals and ethical. That's just for some money or become a fake person. If that means I'm going to make more money, I'm always going to be authentic. I'm always going to be me. So I decided to leave that team. I decided, Hey guys, I'm out. I want out. I'm not doing this anymore. Now bear in mind guys that in those three months, I hadn't made pretty much anything. I had ran out my savings that I had had and I was in a position now where I was like, six months ago I was on top of the world making five figures in a month and I decided to stop myself and now I'm back down to zero. And I felt that same feeling I'd had when I was in my college dorm, which was, I just felt this sort of like pressed feeling coming over me, telling me that like, you know, nothing's gonna work out. And, sat in my bedroom again and I went down into this hole and I just felt like this isn't it. I was in Spain. It looked awesome, but on the back end, things just weren't awesome, you know? And one of my partners, Dave, that I'd worked on the business, he had also left and we decided, okay, what are we going to do next? So in the meantime, while this was all going on, we had met Christopher Harris, who was a founder of Affinity. We decided to set something up called Affinity Sales Training. I loved sales and I was still awesome and great at sales. Don't get me wrong. So I decided, let me just try to teach people how to do sales. Like, I love to help guys. I'm going to teach them how to do sales. We'll do sales trainings twice a week. We'll show them how things work and then just hopefully change some lives, right? So we started that group. Before you know it, through Twitter and other places, we grew to over a thousand people in a group that we used to train twice a week for free how to do sales. Now, this is just a passion, just giving back. And I just love to give back often. So we just kept on doing this. So in the meantime, we just kept working away with this. Now, somehow in this time, I met Cole Rue Johnson, who is a current business partner and a current great friend. And he was looking to build some companies which were building call centers. So he needed some sort of sales team. I knew how to do sales. I had learned how to do marketing. I knew a little bit or two about kind of like building a team. So me and David put in our conversation and said, hey, 
let's work with you. We're motivated. We're ready, right? We want to do this. So I came home from Spain, I came back to Ireland and decided, okay, let's put in the work here and let's focus, right? Let's give a couple of months. In that first month of launching that new business, we collected over $100,000 in revenue. And based on what we had, we were back to five figure months. It just felt like, you know, I'm just constantly on this wave and I'd come back to the top of the wave. But what I had learned before is this doesn't always last. You've got to be focused. So after that, we kept on iterating. We kept on working on it. We kept on building. I kind of realized at this point that really great things do take time to build, right? Fast money and quick money isn't always the best longevity. And I was starting to learn a lot about building teams, managing leadership. I started to realize that for me, money wasn't everything. Like, yes, it was great, but I'm 20. I don't have a house. I don't have, I'm not married. I don't have kids. So really that extra cash, what I need it, what do I need it for? And this brings me back to my point, which is really focus on building skills early on. I know it's great and it's easy for me to say because I've made money, etc. but I really do believe the skills long-term is gonna outgrow everybody, right? There's a kid somewhere today that's not making YouTube videos. He was working on building his coding and he may, I may not know of him, but in six years time, he could be the next Mark Zuckerberg, right? And that's the truth of things, right? Focus on skills in the meantime. So we focus on skills, we focused on building and building and building businesses. And that brought us to the end of through to 2023, where we'd now had two or three teams that we were building up and we had started to really grow things. Now the other side, Affinity Sales Training had become its own community. We decided that we wanted to give people more, so we decided to make it to a real community where you could pay like a subscription for us and we would actually do real sales training, give you opportunities, connect them with different companies. Since then, we've had crazy stories. I've had friends, people go from 1,000 a month to making the first 2,000 to even 17,000 in a month. And it's just been an amazing experience. I love that, that gets me up every single morning. And our aim really this year is to really take that to the next level. I want to change a thousand, two thousand lives. And you know, that kind of brought a, a change to myself as well. Just understanding in this game that, you know, sometimes it really isn't just about the money. You've got to focus on things that you really love and things that you really want to do, right? And it came to the end of last year again. And, you know, I came to a point where I was feeling that bottleneck again, you know, just after my 21st birthday. And I thought, okay, I thought we were doing well. But now it seems like we're kind of like bottling out, right? I was still doing decently, probably making between like seven to maybe like 12,000 a month. But I thought by this point I would have broken past this and been close to like 30 and 40. But really, again, I'd forgotten the basics. Like back at the start, what had gotten me through it was meditation, reading, taking care of my health, focusing on my mind and making sure that I was in the right place. So after I turned 21, I was back home here in the office. I said, do you know what? I'm back here. A year ago, I remember where I got started, but I've learned so much. I have so much more lessons. Why don't we just re-implement all those basic things that I've learned? And since then, things have been only up, 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 and up. You know, and it's been an amazing experience and an amazing journey for me so far. By the way, guys, I am no millionaire or multi-millionaire. I am not somebody that you guys should look up to as like, oh, this great guru. I'm just somebody who is exactly like you guys. And when I first started, I had zero zero people that I could see in my situation that did what I had done. I had nobody to look up to and I vowed to myself that I would do it and that when I've done it, I would bring people alongside the journey with me and be open and honest about how things work, right? I still have so much more things to go. I have so many more things to achieve, but I want to achieve that with you guys so you guys can see it with me. You know, for you guys, I'm sure it probably looks awesome. And for me, I'm looking at the other people who are ahead of me and I'm thinking I haven't done that much. And one of the biggest things I've learned recently, guys, is to focus on your own story. Like I said earlier, I don't know your path. You don't know it. Nobody else does. The only thing that knows it is your intuition. You've got to listen to it, right? Your intuition, God, whatever you want to call it, listen to it, right? And focus on it because it's always trying to make us take the right journey. So guys, that's pretty much the overview of my story, right? If you want to like know a little bit more about sales and you're like, well, high ticket sales sounds pretty interesting. Well, I'm going to drop the link down below to my affinity sales training organization. We've just launched our 2.0. No guys, I'm not selling you. This is just a big part of my life. And I'm sure some of you guys are going to be curious regardless. If you want to join there, then I will see you guys maybe this week or next week during one of our calls. We have three sales trainings every single week and we place people into different companies. My biggest goal this year is to have more people, more friends, more connections, and just change more and more and more lives through the Affinity Sales Training. So if you have any more questions, drop it below and leave a comment below about what's the biggest thing that you took away from this video. And I will be bringing some more things for you guys. Thank you so much. See ya.